Okay, <clears throat> this is Mr. Deckard. As you can tell, I'm losing my voice. Things aren't looking good for tomorrow. Uh, back here at Studio D Productions and uh, in my studio at home. And uh, as I promised, I'm going to go ahead and make a, a follow-up video on today's lesson so that I can break down uh, what it was that we did and what we'll be working on. And hopefully, uh, by breaking it down step by step, and having a format where you can stop, rewind, look at it again. Uh, hopefully you'll, un you'll get a better understanding. And I, I hope that I can get through this with uh, what little voice I do have left. Uh, it's rapidly declining here, so I want to get this made before it gets too late. But before I get going, this video is actually sponsored by something else. Come here, girl. All right. This is the Wonder Westie. This is Sophie Grace. This is our 12 year old Westland Terrier. She is a baby. And uh, here she goes, the Wonder Westie. <laughs> she does not like to be held. This is kind of like put me down. <laughs> oh, what a sweet baby, right? Oh, oh you are a sweet baby. Oh. All right. <clears throat> Gave her the sneezes. All right. <clears throat> so to start, what we want to look at, um, since we're going to make scenery, and that's the whole point today, uh, this is where we're currently at. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep my stage uh, for the picture I'm going to need to bring in. Now, to help you out, what I have done is I have included the picture I'm going to use for this uh, tutorial on a classroom resource tag so that means if you go to the classroom you'll be able to download the picture that I'm going to use here today but in the event that you want to find your own picture I want to show you how to do that so first I'm gonna get rid of that and and you don't need to worry because when you uh, import a picture onto the stage it automatically goes into your library I am going to rename it however I'm gonna call this six birds because that's what it is all right, now you want to be careful about the number of pictures you bring in because they're rather large and they can crash the program. The other thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this. Now I've not actually named the layer yet and that's because I've, I've been using the stage to create my assets not to actually create content that's going to remain on here all the time. For that I need this picture. So the one I'm going to use today uh, is going to be here but before I go anywhere what I did is I searched for Angry Bird Scenery and then once I got here I hit Tools and set it for Large. Now that's important because if you don't get a big picture you won't get uh, good visual quality and you won't be able to see what it is you're trying to make. And so um, what we uh, do here is you click on the image and you'll get this preview. Now you'll know it's a good preview because in the lower left hand corner here it says 1440 by 900. Now that's going to be an image about that big, about like I'm making my hand here right now. That's a good size. A lot of times you'll have something that says 200 by 400. That's going to be about that big, not big enough at all. And you'd wind up stretching it out and it'd pixelate and it wouldn't look good. So uh, I'm going to right click on it and I want to go down to open image and new tab. Once I do that, I can click on the new tab and there's the big image. Now that's the full size of it. And that's probably roughly the size of our monitors at school. I have a 32 inch screen here, so this looks much larger, but uh, this is probably pretty close to what we have at school. So I'm going to right click, copy the image. I'm gonna paste it in here, it's gonna be way too big. But way too big is way better than way too small. I'm gonna use my third tool down. I'm gonna scroll in. Now really all I need is for this to be a reference. So that's good size. Now I'm going to hit control plus and I'm going to scroll over and have a look at what I want to try to create. Now the goal here is to replicate the big pieces, not all of it. And in particular, we can do the clouds here, we can do the sky. We're going to do, convert this to a single layer. It's actually two, but we're going to convert it to one and then we've got our foreground clouds or mountains or whatever they are we'll have these objects and then we'll have uh, the underground 
Now the part we're not going to concern ourselves about too much is the grass. This is way, way, way too much. Um, the rest of the stuff is fairly simple to, to just even scroll out with a, a line tool. But this is going to take some work. It's multicolored. It's layered. Uh, we don't have enough time for that. And it's not necessary. Uh, because as I tell you all the time, Mickey Mouse has three fingers and a thumb. This is his hand. And as long as you have something that's kind of close to grass, people will see grass. So hopefully I can show you how to take care of that very quickly. But let's start with the sky. And I'm going to rename this layer sky. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, pull this over. Oop, not that. I'm going to pull this over. And I'm going to set up my drawing. Uh, dog hair. I want to set it up with no fill, black outline, and I'm just going to make a rectangle. Doesn't really matter about the size, but you notice I'm making it taller than wide. Okay, there's a reason for that. I'm now going to take my black arrow and select off. You want to make sure that you're off to the side. Then I want to come down to the paint bucket, which is right here. And I want to go up to color. Now, if color is not visible, you can go to window and you can find color right here. And then it pops open. We want to make sure our paint bucket is selected right here. Then change it from solid color to linear gradient. Now this is where the magic happens. I am then going to click on this tab and I'm going to select my blue that I want. Uh, and, and theirs is more of a teal almost. Um, I'm not, but I'm not going to concern myself too much with that. That's overthinking it really to a great extent. This is the blue they're using right here, or approximately so. <clears throat> I'm then going to take this and fill it. It's not real far off. Um, then I'm going to use my transform tool, third tool down, or Q. I'm going to surround the object, and while holding shift, I'm going to pull down twice until it snaps into that place. And then I'm going to pull my corners up like so. Now I'm going to do something here that they didn't did or did not do. I'm only going to let that be half. And the reason is uh, maybe even about like that. By the time I put this stuff in, it'll be in front, and I really want to see a change of that color from dark to light. So I can click off of that, and the sky piece is done, um, and now I'm going to clip off the borders because I don't need them and I don't want them. Alright, with that done, I'm going to hit Control G after it's selected, and that will group it. Now that keeps me from tearing it up, and that looks pretty good, doesn't it? So we're going to lock this layer by coming down here to the lower left-hand corner. Am I pointing the right way? The other way. Down here. Yeah, I can see it now. Go down here. Right down there. Right down there. Right down there. Okay. And lock that button. Just, just like that. Okay, that's also going to lock our picture on, but that's okay. It's not going to hurt for it to be there. Now, we're going to make this business. And the important thing is, it does not have to look exactly like that. I'm going to change my fill color once again back to black, or to, I'm sorry, no fill. I'm going to set up for a rectangle. Um, oh, I need a new layer. So, in the lower left-hand corner, I'm going to hit the page with the upturned corner, which is the new layer. I'm going to call this clouds. Because that's basically what, what we're dealing with here. Now, I can draw a box about that big. Looks good. Then I'm going to pull this over. And I'm going to make an oval. Something like that. I'm going to click on it, hit Control C and V, 
Oh, no, 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 no. Control-Z. I don't know why that happened. That that pasted what was in the clipboard before. Control-C, Control-V. That's what I want. And I'm going to let that overlap there like so. Actually, more like that. Control-V. I'm making sure that my circles intersect above that top line, above this line right here. Control-V. And I want to just pile them up like I'm doing. Control-V. That's actually a good position. Control-V. Something like that. Oh, wait a minute. Control-Z. Control-Z. I'm going to take this one. There we go. That's good. All right, now if I turn off my bottom layer, <clears throat> you'll see that I've got a problem here because if I try to clip this edge, it'll also take the top. The way I'm going to solve that is I'm going to take my line tool and line it up right on this line like so until my vertical crosshair disappears. I'm going to left click and hold, hold my shift, and go straight up. And then I'll do the same thing over here. Boom. Now, I can clip off that outside piece. I clip out all the underneath pieces, including the horizontal line. All right, I know this is not terribly exciting, but it doesn't take very long. Boom. Now comes the tricky tricky. We're gonna turn the bottom layer back on because I wanna look at this color here. And now what I need is a really light version of this. So, I am going to sample it Actually, I'm not. No, I don't have to do it that way. Almost messed up there. All right, so I'm going to surround that object. I need to rotate this by holding my shift and going vertically like that. I'm going to deselect it with my black arrow. I'm going to grab my fill bucket. Now, you notice my fill is already on it, right? So I'm going to go to my palette here again change it to linear gradient and what I want is a lighter version of this so I'm going to click on it go to my color wheel and run this up and what that's doing is it's taking a lighter version of the same color and that's important I don't want a different color I want a different uh, tone of that, that color I want it or shade I want it to be brighter and so I'm going to do this and <clears throat> I'm going to add that to custom colors and hit OK. Now if I click it, you see what it did here, right? Now um, what I'm also going to do is uh, I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to run the slider to the left. And that will make the gradient happen a little quicker here on the top, which I need it to. And it's just going to force the transition a little quicker. OK, now notice that most of the transition happens right here. That's good. All right, that's what we want. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see it all. Surround it without touching it. I'm going to transition back. All right. And that's looking pretty good. That's going to be my uh, foreground one. See, that's going to be this one. I'm going to get rid of these lines. By the way, I should be using my black arrow for that. Now you can't see a separation yet, right? Okay, control G to group it, control C and control V, I've copied and pasted it. Now I'm going to drag it off the side. I'm going to rotate it 
90 degrees. And then I'm going to black arrow and hit control B, which will break it apart. And you'll notice now that all this is selectable. Now here's what's going to make or break this. I'm going to go to my color. After I deselect, I'm going to go to my color. Uh, I should have an option to come in here and run this up again, even higher. Add to custom colors, OK. And now I'm going to fill it with that. Almost makes it look white. It's real close, but it's not. All right, you can see there's a blue tinge here, right? I'm going to grab our transform tool, rotate this back down, black arrow, control G. Now I'm going to move it over here. Now, now notice, and I'm going to raise it up just a little bit. See that gap down here? Now while this is still selected, I'm going to hit control down and look what we get. I want to just edge it down so it's more or less like the other one is. And see how we've roughly created the same thing? In fact, it looks like it's continuing on, doesn't it? Not bad. All right. So now what we want to deal with is this little cactus-like thing that we see. But before we do, we want to lock clouds. And then we're going to create a third layer down here. And let's just call this trees, because I think that's what they're supposed to be. Tree, cactus, whatever. All right, now this is going to be fairly straightforward. Um, if we zoom in, ooh, not that much. What we have here on this shape, and I saw some of you doing this today. You were trying to uh, <coughs> hand draw this. Um, you could do that. Um, I could show you how. That, in fact, that may not be a terrible idea. Let's do it that way. Uh, and th this is just a different approach. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make something here. I'm going to color it. I'm going to put it in the library. And then I'm just going to reuse it over and over. And all I'll do is drag instances in, resize them, maybe even flip them around backwards. Like uh, if you look right here and here, these are mirror, basically mirror images of one another. Um, so and just resized. So let's consider how we'd make this. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to trace right over the top of that. That's what some of you were trying to do anyway. Not such a terrible idea. Let's set it up. No fill. And I'm going to use the line tool. Watch this. I'm going to take my line up. Now, you notice that snap that's happening? That's because it can see the image. The tighter you get in, the less impact snap has. So I'm going to get in real tight and try that again. Now, if this doesn't work, I'll go another way. See, you see the discoloration here? That's uh, uh, because it's a JPEG. And the way the, the uh, um, compression works to save it so it's a small file, causes this distortion and this program can see that distortion and that's why it's jumping the way it is all right this is going to surprise you what i'm going to do probably a little bit what i'm doing is i'm connecting all the sharp points now how does that work what is that going to do for us Watch. Eh? Okay, now this one went a little too far because I need to bow that first and then I need to go to that point and to that point. And what I'm going to do from here on out because it's behaving that way is I'm going to do my curves almost right away. And that'll prevent that from actually um, tearing up the way it almost did there. All right. We 
we think. We're doing all right, aren't we? Oh, that's working all right. To that point, to that point. All right, almost there. This is actually going fairly quickly. I'm gonna try this because I don't think I have anything to lose and if it doesn't work, I'll undo it. But I think I can curve that. Look at that, I did. All right. Here, here, here. I'm gonna pull a curve right there. It's trial and error to know what you can curve and what you can't. Uh, I've done this a long time, so I'm really used to what works and what doesn't. And usually if I make a mistake, I can catch it right away, usually, but not always. Like this one right here, you gotta be careful. Because it can get away from you. All right. So curve out, curve out, curve out. Curve in, curve in, curve out. I think that's pretty good. We can live with that, can't we? <clears throat> almost got it done. Believe it or not, it's almost there. I'm going to go here and curve it right now. Because this is a kind of a tough curve. <coughs> All right, from here to here. To here, to here, and believe it or not, the artist who did this probably did something very, very similar to what we're doing right now originally. If not, I wouldn't be able to so quickly cover this the way I am. The tool was a bit more advanced, but it's the idea. You can see I'm coming up with a fairly representative uh, likeness of it. Almost done, almost done. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this down well below here. And I'm gonna stretch this one down. I want it to be bigger than it actually looks like it ought to be. Then I'm gonna cross those lines down here. And then I'm gonna clip them. All right, now, sample the color, fill it. And you might say, there's no way in the world, Mr. Decker, that worked. Oh, it worked. Oh, it worked. And if it didn't, I'll make it work. Okay, watch. On this fill thing, if you have a problem like that, come right down here, close large caps. And if that doesn't work, control minus. And should do it but it's not wonder what oh it did see it just didn't get it all so <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is hit control minus and then hit control plus because what I wanted to do was get that where I could see my fill happening then I can fill it. And I want to zoom in here real tight because I want to make sure there are no gaps. See there are no gaps? Then, carefully delete all those lines. Oh, there's a fill right there that didn't get in. Right here. Got it just in time. I think that's the only one. Yep, it's the only one. Very carefully delete all the lines. Now this will probably take about the longest amount of time of anything to construct. And it's not hard. You, you saw exactly how to do it. You know how to trace. 
that probably made perfect sense. Of all the things I've told you today that, or in the last week on this program, that probably made the most sense to most of you. Okay, now take a black arrow, surround it, hit F8, call it tree, make sure it says graphic here, hit OK. We have our tree. Click off of it and click on, I'm going to drag it up there for right now. Then I'm going to move back to the stage. And we see, oops, actually I'll pull that over. We have a pretty good tree. See? And the beautiful part is, I only had to do one and it'll be really easy to just drag them on, resize them, and place them on my heels. So <clears throat> let's look at this formation. Okay, do you see it right through here? How do we make that? Well, I'm going to delete my tree for now. And I'm going to start with a rectangle. And I'm even going to keep my color for a second because I think I can. Rectangle tool. It just needs to be about mm, right in there. All right, so I'm going to make my rectangle ish. Then I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to just come through here. Oh, that didn't work. Mm, kind of did. That's an accident. Let me show you what I should have done. At, on this toolbar on the bottom right, on the very bottom, I should have changed that to smooth. And I think I'm going to. But I didn't necessarily not like what I just saw there. And then I'm just going to more or less recreate that roughness. The only thing I have to be careful about is to cross right there because that will let me clip that line. And when I get a clip that line, I can then fill with this and that little corner right there. Then when I get that done, I can very carefully delete my black lines. Oh no, control Z, it happens. It totally happens. Almost, almost, almost. There we go. What do you think? <clears throat> now watch. There's a tree. Control C, Control V. I'm going to pull another one over here. Control V. I'm going to scale it down. And place it. Control C, Control V. Look at that. Control V. I'm going to upsize it just a little bit. Look at that. Oh my gosh, just a couple more. Control C, Control V. Oh my, oh my, I love it. I think that's maybe one more. I'll make room. Right there. <coughs> I love it. I love it. That came out so well. Look at that. All right, we're going to lock that layer. Now for the grass layer. So, this is going to be 
pretty straightforward. I'm going to go no fill on this rectangle and create a new layer. I'm going to call it <coughs> grass. All right, I'm going to make it a thin one. Something like that. Then I'm going to come in with my pencil again. I'm not going to worry about whether or not it's shaped great or not because it doesn't matter. Kind of looks like a heartbeat, doesn't it? EKG. Alright. I'm just going to pull a green from here. I'm going to use that green right there. Boom. And I think the smart move would be to delete big line and then do our fill. Now this fill is going to be a little harder because I'm going to have those things every now and then. If I'd made this shape a little farther from the top line I wouldn't be having so much trouble. But it is what it is. I hope it's what's clear here is the importance of putting things on their own layers, which, by the way, is going to become very clear here in just a moment. If it isn't already, I'm going to hit that one right there. All right, then you know what comes next. We've got to get rid of the black line. Now, I think the better way this time is do a control A and just do a no fill. And then we're going to hit control G, which is going to group it together. And then let's have a look. I think that looks okay. I do. I think by the time everything else goes in here. Now it's a little bit better down here than it is here. This is a little bit rough. This is a little bit too thick, but this is good. And that's something I could change if I really wanted to. Alright, I'm not going to worry about the bottom part either too much. I mean, not, not, oh, uh, I don't even know what I want to say. But I am going to pull that up. I'm not going to worry about how rough that looks underneath. Okay, I'm just going to let that be what it is. So, I guess I'm going to hit F8 and call that grass so that I'm uh, putting my uh, most of my stuff into the library so I can reshape it. I didn't do my clouds earlier, although I can come back and get those in a bit. Um, we're going to lock that layer. And now we're going to make underground. This is almost over. So new layer, underground. We're going to um, you know, honestly, we don't even need the outline color this time. All we need, all we need is this. I'm going to put it about right here. And then, not that it matters, but if I decide to change it up later, see, I can pull this underneath. We're not going to worry about that for now. All right. My color is fine. And we can see right now <clears throat> that all we have left to do is just do a few basic uh, shapes, right? Here comes a trick. This looks a little too dark, if you ask me. I think we might have sampled the wrong color. 
Nope. Nope, we didn't. See what happens if we sample this color. That definitely is darker. All right. Control Z. Now, <coughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my shape tool and hold my left button. I'm going to go to Polystar tool. And then I'm going to go to properties. Now right here under options, I can set the number of sides that it has. I want this to have seven sides. And I'm going to pull one out. All right. Now before I do that, I'm actually going to have to do something else. I'm going to have to turn my outline color back on. And I'm going to make it something bright so I can see it. All right, now I'm going to take my black arrow and I'm just going to change the shape of this a bit. See what I'm doing? I'm kind of creating a rock shape. But it's looking to me like seven isn't enough is it so let's make that more like 12. now we really only need so many okay that's a good rock shape i like that And I'm going to make maybe, oh, no, 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 shape with the arrow. That's a good rock shape. All right, those are the only two I need. <coughs> So, <clears throat> I'm going to surround them both, get rid of the, the yellow outline. Surround the first one, F8, rock one. F8, rock two. All right, that's all I need to do. Back to the library. Then I can start pulling these on. I'm going to scale it. See it? Control C, V, 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 V. V, 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 V. I know you don't believe it, but we're almost there. V, V, V. Nothing says that your shapes have to be the same as their shapes, right? Just remember that. And then we're going to take this one, scale it down. Control C. V, 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 V. And all you do with that is you just start sticking them in between. Just fill up your spaces. There's no magic to this.
It's not all that tricky. You're just trying to create a suggestion of something. That's all they do. VB. What do you think? Does it look exactly like the other one? No. But after I lock that down, if I zoom out and I unlock sky, and I take this and I delete it, what does that look like? Anyone looking at that would say, well, that looks like Angry Birds. And isn't that what we're trying to do? All right, so I'm going to rename this original picture. So I know that it was my reference picture. But other than that, boom. And let's double click here. Boom. I think it's beautiful. Um, I don't know how long this video is at this point in time. It feels like roughly half an hour. Uh, we'll see after I close this up. But uh, uh, honestly, if you get it to this level, we haven't built any buildings yet or anything like that, but that's an Angry Birds, authentic Angry Birds scenery. It's one of the ways that you legitimately could use uh, to build it, and uh, it's easier than it looks. So with that, this has been a Studio D production. Mr. Deckard, thank you for watching. Oh, and she's asleep now. I don't know if you can see her over there, but um, she thanks you too. So, have a good night.